so in the front view if you want to trace uh, a sketch you can type picture and load your sketch like this and you could just grab the curve and start tracing on top uh, here I want to do a, a letter so I could uh, use another photo more like this but to be frank I'm not a big fan of this one so I'll redraw it myself um, the curve tool the more points you have closer to each other the less organic you see so if you want to do a straight it's how it works so I'll start like this and I usually draw up a few points you don't want too many of them you don't want also corner too tight we'll talk about this in a second you'll see why so I usually drop my points and then I come back and I tweak them voila that's pretty good I'm not happy with the design but I'm happy with uh, roughly the number of points you, so you can go Control shift e or you can go Z e to uh, zoom um, uh, zoom extend or frame all to bring everything to the screen so now that I have this like I was saying be careful with those it's uh, it could be tricky to uh, to fit at edge this if it's too um, too narrow um, you could actually draw a curve inside and remember those curves can come from Illustrator as long as they are AI uh, or even AutoCAD voila then we go extrude CRV to make it 3D so extrude curve basically uh, the one we always use we make it solid we could go both sides and here we uh, we want thick a little bit but not too much something like this then I'll switch to shaded I can go Control shift e to look at it and as you can tell it looks alright but it's really flat so here's a trick to make this more um, look like compound curve I don't need this so I'll get rid of that curve and get rid of this one voila. there's a tool it's like a lattice deformer it's called cage edit don't think about it always click on bonding box it means it's take the entire object wall that's the axis and 4 4 4 is how many times it subdivide for now I think 4 is okay enter and always global so every time you use that tool bonding box wall and global so now if I select carefully the middle point all of them I can press shift to uh, scale them in um, in three axes you see and that's gonna simulate a rounding I went a bit far here but well, like the software I'm using uh, F10 or Showpoint stop the recording that's why I had uh, to rewind a bit so here we can take all of the center point and scale them out a little bit and if you want that curve to look even nicer we can scale them a little bit more like this and a little bit more here voilà. so now you see we've got compound curves and that's a very good way of um, faking a, a, a surface with a solid escape twice to hide now you can delete this and if let's say you're happy with this we can go fillet edge uh, the radius I'm not sure we'll try 0.3 first and we'll select all of them just to see how deep is 0.3 that's pretty good actually enter enter might be too big here for the corner we'll see
actually it worked. Um, so now we can even go render to show you the, f the result. And then we can uh, take it to... Uh, so for jewelry stuff, it's this is a very good way of doing things. You can attach the chain here. And um, yeah, I like this method. Um, and as you know, to if you want to do a rendering of it, you'll uh, convert, convert it to a mesh. Uh, here we'll go a little bit higher because it's a simple one. Delete. And we'll save this as a version 5 because Modo only open Rhino 5, at least for now. And often in a file comes from, uh, it'll be very tiny. You see, it's really, really small. So you can zoom out. If you don't see it, you go here, you select the, the mesh and you press Shift A. And we can go in Polygon and scale it a lot, like when I say a lot, a lot. It'll, ma it'll make the lighting just easier. Voila, Q to drop, remove this. Then we can apply a material, M. I'll call it 2. And W to move it up. And to do a very quick render, uh, we can delete the default light. Uh, and we can go F6 to load the presets. So we need an environment. And here for fun, we can use... Um, uh, what could be fun here? Yeah, the ditch. Double click. And uh, now you could start rendering. So make sure that this is set up to uh, render camera. It's good. All to orbit, all shift to pan, scroll to zoom, um, F8 to see the preview. And then you can open again F6 to see all of the presets. So now we can go on the material. Actually, yeah, it looks pretty good. I could just keep it like this. Voila, we can play with it. See, actually default is not bad. And um, if you want to try a different type of material, we can uh, always go here. Polygon, double click to select one face if you want different one. So we can go M. So we can press M and call that uh, front face. Then uh, select this. Maybe the inside too with Shift M uh, Contour sides and now we can sp try different material so for the side we could try uh, maybe some sort of uh, aluminum maybe brushed So this one is a car paint, has a metallic flake. And anyway, we could goof around for hours, but uh, I'll stick to this. And uh, as you know, we could go render, um, settings. We could boost that up a little bit more, 0.2. Um, those one, we could put them to 512, so we get a cleaner result. Um, for the shadows, 512 too. And when you use those environment, it's nice to put uh, this one on, not the red. And if you do a high end steel, you could go 512 here too. We could do a hair of uh, tone mapping, maybe 10%, and maybe a hair of um, also bloom. We could try that. 
uh, a hair of vignette because it's outside I would not go too strong on the vignette just a, a hair like uh, even 80 just to break down a little bit and then uh, render render so it is rendering very slowly uh, et voila I would stop here because it's way too slow to render but after you can try on and off the bloom and see you know Maybe it'll, it'll glow here a little bit. I think it will help a bit.